Well, hello there, folks. DJ Bergstar here, back with another tip of the day. So today I want to talk about latency. It seems like a lot of folks are a little bit confused and it's a little bit complicated working with latency. So let me make it uncomplicated. And I'm going to sort of explain three techniques on how to sort of eliminate your latency. Um, so we're going to record some MIDI with no latency and we're going to record audio with no latency. And then I'm going to give you a third example, which is sort of a workaround. And we'll talk about that when it comes. OK, let's just uh, show you a little piece of this track here so you can see what I have going on. We'll play a little bit. Alright, you can see that I have a lot of tracks going on. I've got a lot of third-party plugins, I've got a lot of third-party effects, and a lot of Ableton effects, and there's just a lot going on. And what I have done in my settings is I have this set to 512 samples for my buffer size. However, that gives me a pretty big latency here. The reason I have it set to that is so my computer can handle playing all this without glitching and that sort of thing. But for recording, uh, this is kind of bad because you're going to have this awful latency that's going to be introduced. So first let's start off with MIDI um, as an example. So um, I'm going to pick an instrument I know would have a lot of latency, which would be this Serum device here. So this only works if you have your record quantization set to none or no quantization because if you do it'll sort of nudge it anyway and and sort of try and quantize it for you um, and in that way you might not be worried about latency however you might have a pianist that comes in or a guitar player and they want that human feel. You know, they want um, what they recorded um, to be the way they played it and not quantized or something. So in MIDI, um, let's show you the example here. Um, what I would do is, is I'm going to duplicate this track first. Hit Command D. Now I'll have two of these tracks. One, I'm going to set to off for monitoring, and one I'm going to leave at the default. Now turning this to off is basically like having a direct out, where it's going to record without going through all of Ableton's processing and out the other side first before it starts recording. Um, and that'll end up with a bunch of, um, you know, delay and latency. So what you do is, is if you record one off and whoops, uh, and record one just auto, you have to have this one on or you won't be able to hear what you're doing. Um, so if you want to hear it while you're playing, you've got to have this set to auto or in so you can hear what's going on. So I'm going to record both of these at the same time. And let's do that. And I'll show you the difference here. Okay, so I just hit a few notes, but let's zoom in and see what this looks like. Um, as I zoom in closer, look at that. Look at that latency. So these are off. The one that went through Ableton with its default setting has this latency on it. But this one does not because it went direct. And so what you can do is is since you basically just duplicated this track, you know everything else is still safe over here. So you can just take the one that has the latency on it and just delete it. Goodbye. 
and then you can turn this track back to auto so you can hear it properly and now you have recorded MIDI with no latency and no quantization either. Um, if somebody is playing super fast, I'll explain that in a minute. There's a workaround. Um, so now let's show you the audio example. So let's say I wanted to um, have a guitar player coming in or a pianist. Um, let's make a new track for them to record on. Here it is. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make two tracks. I'm going to duplicate this and on one track, I'm going to have it set to auto and the other to off. We'll record both at the same time and you'll see what happens now. Okay, so let's zoom in here and see what happened. If I zoom in, oh, I can see it already. Look at that. Big latency problem right there. So again, what I would do is I know this track is safe if I had other stuff on it because I just duplicated it. So I'm just going to delete the one that had the latency. And we'll keep the one that didn't and just turn it back to auto so we can hear it playing. And now we know that audio was recorded with no latency, which is great. And that's what we wanted to accomplish. Now, here's where the problem comes in and why latency is sort of a pain. <laughs> Let's say you did have a guitar player or a pianist coming in that's playing really fast. You know, they're, they're wailing a, some guitar solo and... If they're listening to your whole track playing, um, even trying to do this method, it doesn't matter because they're listening to this one that's given them the latency because the other one is off. The monitor is off, so they can't hear it. Um, so if they can't hear, they can't really play. So this doesn't work in... A scenario where you've got somebody just wailing away or a pianist that's playing something complicated and they don't want it quantized uh, you know that sort of thing or other instruments um, there's going to be this delay especially if you had your uh, buffer size here set to what I had at this 512 it's just going to be very difficult for them to just be playing fast solos and stuff because it's going to be frustrating for them because there's this delay in their monitoring so um, my workaround for that is what you do is even though you're still editing this track and it's not done and you know this guitar player just came in to lay down their part um, what you would do is just make a reference track for them so you would come over here and just export um, you know, the entire track so they can come in and record. So what you'll do is you'll export that and then you'll launch a fresh tra um, version of Ableton, just an empty project. And in that way, you don't have any instruments on it. You don't have any plugins. You don't have anything processing or going on. So you can actually come up to your settings again in this new project you launched just to have them record on and you can set this down to 64 samples maybe is a safe one um, and then when you look at the latency here it's only 8.9 uh, milliseconds um, you can try and go to 32 but it doesn't seem to help the latency very much see it's still 8.2 which isn't much difference um, but, you know, if your computer can handle it, then more power to you. Um, so what you do is then is you launch this new fresh project and then drag in the, um, let's see, is audio here. You would drag in the whole track, 
um, that you're using sort of just as a reference track. Um, so they can record on the next track and when they're monitoring this time since you were able now to set your latency much lower they should be able to wail away on their guitar and be very close to um, not having any latency at all there's no way to get rid of it completely um, however once you're at this point you can go ahead and do that first trick again so since this only has the reference track and what they're doing you can go ahead and let's see here we'll add the track that they were going to record on we'll insert another audio track all right and they're going to be recording on this track but we can do the same trick um, we can duplicate this track and if you really want it recorded with no latency at all, um, we can do the same thing. They'll be monitoring this one where they're recording on, but this time it should be way closer so they can actually do those fast solos and, and not get frustrated with the delay, or the delay will be so small that they might not notice it. However, we can still have this one off and be recording what they're doing with the zero latency as well so we could do the same thing we could delete the track that had a little bit of delay uh, but this time it'll be much smaller bit of delay um, and just use the one that had none so that's the workaround um, if you are you know recording a um, fast guitar solo or something like that that needs really low latency for them to even be able to come in and record so hopefully these tips and explanation of latency um, helps you guys out and explains it better so i guess i will see you guys on the next one thanks a lot for watching dj bergstar out